Hello everyone. Today, we're going to discuss how to store, retrieve, and manage recipe data within EasyBuilder Pro. To get started, let's open our software, and I have a basic project that we'll be using during today's demonstration. I'd also like to note that I'm using EasyBuilder Pro version 6.05.01.350. And if your software is prior to version 6.03.02.257, then the location of our recipe features within this video will be different than your configuration. To create our first recipe, we'll select the Data Slash History tab, and towards the center, we'll find our recipe functions. We'll select the Recipe Database button, and our recipe database will open. Within our Definition tab, we'll select the green button on the left hand side to add a new recipe. When naming recipes, you should use only alphanumeric characters, and there shouldn't be any spaces. I'll name mine Recipe Demo for this example. I'd like to note that you can add up to 100 recipes within your project, and each recipe can record data from a maximum of 1,000 items. Let's select New on the bottom right to add an item to our recipe. I'm going to call this item Part and specify this item's data type as ASCII with a size of 5 words. Now we'll add another item, which I'll call number. And I'll make this 16-bit unsigned. And with those items in my list, let's review some of the functions and features. On the lower left, we can import or export our recipe's definition along with any data that we've pre-configured within the Data tab. Just below this, we'll find that we can prohibit updates to our HMI's recipe database from a remote HMI using an import-export object. On the lower right, we can add, delete, or configure the settings of each item within our recipe list, The small arrows on the right side of our list are used to reorganize the items. To do this, we must first select an item, and then use the arrows to move it either up or down. And the red X in the top left corner will delete our selected recipe. Switching to the Transfer tab, here, we can define a direct transfer from our recipe database to our PLC or external device. It's important to note that this feature is actually new to version 6.05, meaning that if you don't see this tab and you wish to use this feature, you'll need to download a later version of EasyBuilder Pro. To define a transfer, we'll first need to enable this feature. Then, we can either define a bulk transfer, which will transfer a selected row of data to a sequential list of registers within the PLC, or we can transfer each address individually at our discretion. Let's configure both transfers to separate addresses. You'll notice by default, each item must be enabled individually. With that, I'd also like to point out that the transfers specified within this tab can be exported and imported in the same way that the definition can. Let's switch to our Data tab, where we can add data to our database file. Data added within this tab will be contained within the project file, 
and download it onto the HMI. I'll take a moment to add a few data points here. And once again, the data can be organized using the arrows on the right hand side. With that finished, let's go ahead and take a look at our System Register tab. Here, we'll find information about the system registers, commands, and results. This section will serve as a reference as we design our interface. Now that we're finished, let's click OK and add some controls to our project. To start, I'll select a recipe view object, which you can find next to our recipe database button. In the general tab of our recipe view object, we can define what recipe our object will display at the top. From there, we can define what items will be displayed within our view object. And at the bottom, we can configure the display format and color. Because I only have one recipe within my project, I'll leave most of my settings as default and define a caption. And we'll click OK and place our object. Now, I'll create some additional objects that will allow us to monitor and control our recipe. To start, I'll select the Object tab and create a set word object within my right address. I'll select Recipe from the drop down list. And then in the secondary list, I'll select our command register. Now, in previous versions of Easy Builder Pro, we would normally define a 1 within our set value box to send a command to add a new recipe. And we could continue creating our objects in this way until we've defined all of the commands that we need for our recipe to function. And while we can still create objects using this method, it may seem inconvenient to continuously reference the system register tab for our command values. In the latest version of Easy Builder Pro, our development team has made defining commands much easier. Down below in the Attribute section, I'll select Object Control Command. In the secondary drop down list, I'll select Recipe. And from my list of commands, I'll select Add a New Recipe Record. And then I'll click the Label tab and give our object a label. And then we'll select OK to place our object. Now I can either copy this object or select a new set word. Let's select a new set word in this example. What you'll notice is that Easy Builder Pro now remembers our last configuration, making it much faster to add each object to your project. With that said, I'll go ahead and finish creating my command objects. With my button objects finished, let's create our item objects as well. I'll start by creating an ASCII object, and we'll again address this to our recipe register. Now by default, our part item will be selected because there are no other system registers for our recipe database that involve non-numeric data. So we can click OK and place our object. Next, I'll select a numeric object, and with our recipe register selected, 
We'll select our number item and then click OK to place our object. Although you may have noticed, I thought I'd mention that each object will automatically conform to the specifications listed within the recipe database when configured. This includes data type and word count. Now let's create the additional system registers that we can use to monitor the data within our recipe. I'll select a numeric object and I'll address this to our recipe selection register, which will display the row number of the current selected recipe. Next, we'll create the recipe count object, which will display the total number of entries within our recipe database. And since we've already created our command objects, let's go ahead and create our recipe result numeric object. And of course, this object will display the result of the commands that we execute. Now that I'm finished, I'll go ahead and touch up my project, and then we'll set up an additional object that will allow us to export our recipe. All right, so I've touched up my project and added some labels to identify each object. And I've also added the registers used within my PLC transfer. For the next part of our project, we're going to discuss how we can export our recipe as a CSV file. To start off, I'm going to select our data slash history tab and next to our recipe database, I'm going to select the import export object. And when prompted, I'll select new to create a new object. I'll ensure recipe database is selected within the type dropdown list. Then within the recipe dropdown list, we'll select the recipe that we want to export. When exporting recipes, I can either send this recipe to a remote HMI or save this within a USB disk. During this demonstration, we'll make sure that USB disk is selected. Down below, we'll configure our control address to LW0. And I'm going to make sure that the include folder path box is selected. and we'll configure our file address to LW3. And keep our word length at its default setting. And then click OK to save our configuration. Now we're going to create a few additional objects that will help us export our file. The first object that I'm going to create is a file browser. To do this, We'll select our Object tab, and on the top right, I'll select the File Browser. Within our File Browser's properties, I'll select Folder plus File Name, and configure our address to LW3. Then I'll click OK and place my object. I'd like to point out that the file browser actually isn't necessary to export your file, but it will be helpful during this demonstration. Now, let's create the ASCII object that we'll use to define our file name. I'll address this to LW3 as well. And we'll also want to create some additional set words to either import or export our files. 
To do this, I'm going to use the same method that we used last time. I'll address our set word to the control address of our import export object, which in this case is LW0. And then in the attribute section, I'll select object control command, then select my import export object for recipes, and define my command. This button, I'll make my import button. And I'll go ahead and label this, and then create the rest of our objects. As you can see, I've created our additional export objects. And we're ready to run a simulation. To do this, I'll select the Project tab. And since I'm connected to my Modbus device, I'll run an online simulation. With our simulation running, you'll notice that my pre-configured data has populated my recipe table. And if we select a row, the data is displayed within our ASCII and numeric entry objects. The recipe selection field displays the current selected row, and the count reflects the total number of rows within our recipe database. Let's go ahead and enter a new recipe. And then we'll use our Add button to add this recipe to our database. We can also edit this information within our selected row. And then use the Update button to save our changes. We'll use our to PLC button to transfer this data to our PLC registers. And then I'll select a new row and update this data from our PLC. Before we demonstrate our delete buttons, let's go ahead and export our recipe database. To do this, I'm going to enter a file name into our ASCII object. And I'll also add the extension .csv. Then we'll select our export button. And you'll see that our file is now displayed within our file browser. This file can also be found within the USB 1 folder of the EB Pro installation directory. Now that we have a CSV backup of our recipe, I'll go ahead and demonstrate our delete buttons. And then we'll select our file from our file browser and use our import button to retrieve our backup. With that, I hope you've learned a lot during this introduction to our recipe database. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.